Hi there. During this session I'm going to talk about the energy changes during simple harmonic motion. In particular I'm going to be thinking about a mass displaying simple harmonic motion whilst on a spring because it gives me a chance to talk about the idea of Hooke's law which comes up occasionally um, but it's a kind of a simple example which I think we can all work from. So first of all let's think about what we have here and why the simple harmonic motion takes place. So the mass is on a spring and it has what's known as a resonant frequency and that's due to something called the spring constant which is dependent on the type of spring you have and the mass involved and they're the only two features which we need to worry about. So what happens is that when the spring is extended too much there's a restoration force which pulls it back up again and it keeps on pulling it back up again until it's fully coiled up and then what will happen is gravity will pull it back down again and this will go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth so there is a, I guess, a, a point of um, equilibrium position and that's where the restoring force of the spring and the gravitational force, the weights due to the mass here um, are equal to each other the spring, as shown here, obeys Hooke's law, which is the force in the spring equals minus k times x, which is the displacement. Um, for this reason, and it just happens that it works out quite nicely here, that the angular frequency squared is equal to k divided by m, so the spring constant divided by the mass, therefore the angular frequency equals the square root of um, k, the spring constant, divided by mass. And that means that and we can put the angular frequency into a simple sinusoidal equation and that explains the process which you see which is simple harmonic motion. So that's the background I suppose. Uh, with this simple harmonic motion with a spring what we get is uh, if we think of the position um, here shown against time we get that up and down, up and down and you can see the equation is the amplitude multiplied by the sine of the angular frequency times time or we can replace angular frequency with the square root of the spring constant divided by mass. Either way we get a nice simple harmonic motion and we get um, as expected uh, a mathematically fitting uh, sinusoidal up or down graph. Okay. Now let's think about the energy involved in this situation. Okay. So now we're thinking about energy. Um, first of all, it's in its normal position and I provide it with two joules of kinetic energy from its main location and pushed it upwards. So I pushed it up with two joules of kinetic energy. What will happen is, as this kinetic energy uh, will transfer into potential energy up to the point when there's no kinetic energy left and then it's at its peak and everything's converted into potential energy. The potential energy will then try and be um, transferred again into kinetic energy so the mass will fall down to a point when the potential energy is zero and the kinetic energy is two. Uh, then this will keep on falling down and down and down up to the point when the force on the spring causes it to pull back up again and at that point there's no kinetic energy because it's changing direction so it's instantaneously motionless but the potential energy is two joules and this will go on and on and on as we go through it. Now let's look at how we can use this to calculate the amount of energy which is involved. First of all, clearly the potential energy is related to how far we are away from the equilibrium position. So it's actually dependent on the force times the displacement so that's the amount of work done. Um, if I differentiate this through, and there's no need to do this, okay, um, in IB physics, um, the differentiation is something which isn't to worry about. But what happens is I, I can work out a formula which means that the potential energy is going to equal times half times the mass times the angular frequency squared times the displacement squared. So I've got a formula for potential energy which I can use. Um, with kinetic energy, um, obviously half times mass times the velocity squared uh, we know that we can calculate uh, how to calculate velocity 
So this means that when I put that value in, I get half times mass times the angular frequency squared multiplied by the amplitude squared minus the displacement squared. Putting these things together, the potential energy and the kinetic energy, assuming that the system is closed and there's no outside factors, um, will add up to be the total energy. So assuming no energy is lost, we find the total energy. And if I put both these values in and simplify, I get half times the mass times the angular frequency squared times the amplitude squared. Now you'll notice that this is going to be a constant. If there's no energy being lost from the system, it means the amount of energy in the system is always going to be a straight line, the sum of these two values. However, the potential energy and the kinetic energy will go up and down, but be completely out of phase. So that's the idea of the energies. Final step here is just give you some examples of types of situations where this will take place. I've shown you the mass on a helical spin spring. Uh, we could have a cantilever going up and down, and that means that the rod itself is going to be possessing the kinetic energy. A simple pendulum swinging back and forth, or uh, a rod floating in a uh, liquid, assuming that there's no viscosity. Okay, so the rod popping up and down inside the liquid. So I'll we'll give you an example question now, just to wrap this up. A pendulum bob of a mass 200 grams is oscillating with an amplitude of 3 centimeters and frequency of 0 0.5 hertz. How much kinetic energy will the bob have, bob have when it passes through the origin? So what's the kinetic energy? I'll give you a moment to try and calculate that. Pause this if you need to. Okay. Now, I'll take you through the steps here. First of all, I need to work out the angular value, so therefore I can work out that this is going to be pi, so pi rads per second, radians per second. Kinetic energy maximum is going to be half m omega squared amplitude squared. So I put those numbers in. Notice how that I've converted 200 grams into 0 0.2 kilograms and 3 centimeters into 0 0.03 meters. And that gives me a value of 8.99 times 10 to the minus 4 joules. And that calculation is there completely.